What is up, our Will Pill number one fans? Scott Casey Will Pill number one. And today, I'm going to give you my recap and reveal of 24 Legacy Season 1, Episode 1, enti entitled 12 o'clock p.m. to 1 o'clock p.m. It was directed by Stephen Hopkins, and it was a really, really good series premiere. Oh, okay, let's begin with the recap, shall we? The Super Bowl is over. It's time to start a new day. 24 Legacy brings uh, back the ticking clock and world lifetime adventures of a man trying to stop a deadly terrorist plot from taking place on American soil. While CTU is still Mount Jack Bauer is, and so, so the premiere introduces a brand new cast of characters and a new terrorist plot that involves major sleeper cells. Eric Carter vs. the Terrorists. 24 Legacy begins with a familiar site as as terrorists torture and kill a family while searching in the house. Here, here's a quick and while I went back. So six months ago, a team of army rangers under under command of CTU to wait at the, the compound of a terrorist mastermind, my, my Abraham Ben Khalid killing him. Afterwards, the six men and their family and their families were given new identities, but now They've been discovered by Ben Khalid's people who are hunting them down in search for a stolen strongbox. One of the two, one, one, only two of the Rangers are alive. Team leader Eric Carter, played by Corey Hawkins, and his best friend Ben Grimes, whose, whose time in the military here had serious psychological effects. Ben calls Carter to warn him about Ben Khalid's people, but it's not too late, late because the terrorists break into Carter's house and take him hostage. They're about to pour bleach into his eyes, but get distracted and caught up. The plant, plant plus his wife are able to kill the terrorists and escape. He calls Rebecca Ingram, former head of CTU, who, who oversaw the original mission to update her. He also needs her to help track down Ben because Carter knows, knows who, who ha he has the strong box. The new CTU. Rebecca is retired and focused on helping the president campaign of her husband, Senator John Donovan. Carter's car, car whoops up back into action at CTU where the only person she trusts is her analyst, Andy. Since the location of the army rangers could only have come from a limited number of sources, Rebecca can't trust her replacement, a new CTU director, Keith Mullins. Rebecca seems to ask herself, what would Jack Bauer do? Because she takes Mullins and ties them up and find out if he's leaked the names. She and Andy also help the lead to Carter to Ben. Cause the sibling drama. Before Carter dives back into the world of fighting terrorists, he needs to make sure he, his wife Nicole is safe. He can't take her out to the cops. So he visits his brother, a drug dealing kingpin named Isaac. Carter and his brother have a very rocky past, especially since Isaac used to date Nicole. Nicole. But Isaac eventually decides to take her in and protect her with, with his gang. But there's, there's only one person clearly unhappy with the arrangement that's Isaac's current girlfriend, Aisha. What's in the strong box? Carter eventually tracks down back. Ben, who indeed has the strong box. Inside is a, is a flash drive containing names and, and activation codes for, for Ben Carter's sleeper cell in America. So the terrorists won, won in order to launch multiple domestic attacks. Ben Carter's men find him, but a big action sequence in, involving a giant warning cylinder leaves Carter the victorious. The bad news is that Ben and the, and the flash drive are gone. So Ben just decides that he wants to get paid by the U.S. government in exchange for the flash drive. And if they aren't willing to meet his price, he'll sell it to the terrorists as Jack Bauer would say, damn it. Welcome to Terrorist High School. In an unconnected story that will surely pay dividends later, Amora is a high school student whose ex-boyfriend, Jew, fears she's been been, been radicalized based on terrorist-related texts on her phone. 
Momoa and a border are a shaking immigrant, shaking immigrant reminiscent of the Boston bom bombers. Momoa refuses to talk to Joe, so he tells his teacher, Mr. Harris, about his connect about his concerns. Unfortunately for Joe, in the truly 24 style twist, Mr. Harris is having an affair with Amira and is helping her terrorist plot by using see his chemistry skills to create a weapon. It's probably safe to assume that they are part of the one that killed Ben Khalid's, one of those Ben Khalid's sleeper cells, just waiting to be activated. And I would give this episode four and a half stars. It was really good. I didn't think it was going to be as good as the original 24, but it is. I mean, it's really good. The, I think the cast is good. I think the characters are good. I, I really like the plot, the story plots, and the, the plot twists and storyline. I think it's um, going to be great, great, and I think it's going to get better than a lot of people expected. Anyway, like I said, I would rate this four and a half stars. Two thumbs up, way up. Comment down below in the comment section. Tell me, Scott Casey Gale, what you thought of the, the series premiere of 24 for Legacy Season 1, Episode 1, entitled 12 o'clock p.m. to 1 o'clock p.m. What do you think is going to happen in the remaining 11 episodes? Tonight is Episode 2, and I will be definitely reviewing. Anyway, subscribe to my channel, Will Feel Number 1. My best question is BB717, Godzilla, Godzilla Hawk, um, Jade Films, Aces Brothers. Subscribe to my Western channel, National Western Shooters. NWS Revolution, NWS Network, NWS Gaming Channel, subscribe to my other best friend, the Country Kid 14, subscribe to um, Global Smith Entertainment, Vintage, and follow me on Twitter at Will Phil, and one. You stay classy, live long, and prosper, and peace out.